We're Whoa. back. Oh my God, it's so good. New soundtrack. Oh, Byron, it's so good. It's so good. The energy is the so energy. much better oh. with music. Wow. Oh. Oh, I'm so ready. I'm All ready right. for this episode. Okay, we so have a, a Ripper episode, I believe. Well, Coming I off mean, the back of a Ripper evening. A Ripper evening? But yeah. every, every episode's a Ripper episode, one true. might say. So true maybe enough. it's a redundant statement. You could say that. You could, could say, say that. that. You could say that. So, Byron, how are you? I'm amazing. Yeah. And I have to say, you mentioned we're off for a hot night. So we saw the first episode of Game of Thrones show and it was messed up. The new Game of Thrones show. House of Dragons. So yeah. we got invited to the premiere last night. We got to yeah. see the first episode and whew. It feels like the old Game of Thrones is back. Like original season yeah. one, two, and three. Like we did a bit of an interview afterwards with TikTok and that's what we said. We were yeah. like, I, I had that feeling. And obviously it's easier when there's like, at the at the premiere, they were like playing the music and there was like fire everywhere mm. and like the throne and shit. So like, you you know, they hyped it up. But um, in terms of what happened in the show, I, it's the same feeling I had when we were watching like the first couple of seasons of yeah. Game of Thrones. Sex, nudity, violence, lots of violence, lots, politics, yeah. you know, it's Game of Thrones. It really only focused on the one family for now, but I'm sure they're going to expand. But that you made an interesting point and it's that because it's only one family and because we do, there's not so many storylines yet, um, there was actually time to get into the scenes and like there was there was like cool, it was, it was slow and intense. Mm. Whereas one of the things that happened with the Game of Thrones towards the end of the seasons is that like, there was just too much happening. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they couldn't put any detail in. It was just like one shot from Khaleesi, one shot from Jon Snow. And, and there was no detail. It was just like the script writing kind of just died. Exactly. And so, yeah, no, it was an awesome episode. Very, very exciting. Um, I think it's gonna be a great show. I think- Can we, talk, very, about, can we talk about things that happened? I, don't I mean, think it's so. just very disturbing. Yeah. Like it's a it's a stomach churning episode. Like it's Absolutely. Game of Thrones. It's, it's you know, MA15. It's yeah. um, awesome to be back with that though. So I thought that was cool. That's not even sponsored guys. We just wanted to share that. No, yeah. Cause we had, a, we had a really fun time. So TikTok invited us. So um, yeah, a little bit about our life. So yeah, shout the premiere was really cool. Shout out to Binge, shout out to TikTok. Yeah, that's an unsponsored, just a genuine, just had yeah, a good night. It's a freebie. Yeah, freebie. Um, yeah, exactly. That nah, was dope. But I mean, as usual, Factor Caps, News for Noobs and uh, Would You Rathers are the three kind of rock solid segments we've got so far. We're looking at introducing new ones. If you have any ideas, as listeners, feel free to hit us up. The other thing I would like to say is that this is, although we uploaded a podcast episode this morning, oh, this is the first official podcast we're doing with Acast. We've just yes. signed to Acast as a Acast creator. We've yeah. just signed you with Acast, which is a massive podcasting network. And um, they've been very generous. Usually you have to have a certain amount of downloads to join them, but because we've got a following on TikTok, they yeah. wanted to bring us on anyway early, yeah. which is really cool. So it shows that they're committed to us. Um, so uh, shout out to the team and um, we're excited. Like this is- this is big for us, so. Yeah, very big cool. for us, very um, actually worthy Ooh. of a drink, mum, one might say. We say also that. have our branding and new logo. Oh shit, we will have that for this episode. Which yeah. is sick. Shout out to Alex Shute. Yeah, so Alex Shute, a friend of mine, she designed it. Um, we went through multiple different ideas and then scratched all of them and went with a completely new idea. Which is kind of hilarious. Which is awesome. Watch so, out, that's in the middle of the camera. Yeah. I won't say what it is, but if you yeah. wanna see it, go follow us on social, but it's a phenomenal, cheers. Cheers, man. It's been a, it's been a wild ride. A phenomenal uh, logo. So, mm. oof, first three minutes of the podcast, we've gotten a bit personal. Hopefully, people yeah, actually sorry enjoy guys. listening to us. Could you turn my just... headphones down just a touch as well? I'm yeah. coming in real hot. You are too. No, 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 no. That's the microphone. Headphones. Bo top right. Yeah. 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 That's better. That's better. That's better. That's better. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. All right. Factor cap. Do we have a jingle for it? Uh, how about this one? <laughs> No, that's the news for noobs, isn't uh, it? How about this one? No. Back to Ooh, Cap. Yay. That is good, the Byron. That is good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm just figuring this out. Here's one for you, Byron. Did you know that Game of Thrones was inspired by European history? No. So let me explain. George R. R. Martin has said the books were loosely based on the bloody feuds of medieval warring factions as they battled for the English throne in the 15th century. But if we take a closer look at the houses, there are many pieces of European geography and history thrown in, right? So, you know, Highgarden and, and the Tyrells? Yeah. They're like the French, right? Yeah, the okay, Lannisters are like the Germans and the Dutch. King's Landing apparently is in the Mediterranean, like maybe Venice or something yes, like yes. that. We've got Spain and Portugal, which is Dawn, yeah. obviously. The North, which is a mix between like uh, England and Scandinavia. Yeah. Russia is Scotland meets Russia. Like, sorry, the above the wall is like Scotland and Russia. Yeah, yeah. And then like, obviously there's like Mongolia for the Dothraki and like North African Marines and stuff like that. Doesn't surprise me at all. In fact, where else would you get it from? Totally. Like, I think 
obviously he's created the whole world, but you've always got to draw from some level of inspiration. So it makes a lot of sense to me. It's like, it's like the Avatar, right? Yeah. Earth, wind, and fire. They're all forms of like different fighting styles and different like monks. Uh, the monks are from the airbenders. They're all yeah, yeah, inspired yeah. from that. But it's it's cool to watch the show with that in mind and be like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like yeah. they've, they've drawn from, from these cultures. So like, yeah. Let's go on. I'll say fact. Well, who the fuck knows? Actually, oh. no, it is fact. It is a fact, but I think the links... Like the inspiration is a fact. So yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's, let's go with that. Amazing. Game of Thrones related one. There you go. Well, off the bat, you know. Off the bat. Got to do it while it's, while it's coming exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. Um, I got two different stories, but they're both around the same concept. Mm-hmm. The first one is the dark truth about the Captain Morgan logo. Ooh, okay. Do you know the Captain yeah, Morgan yeah, logo? Yeah. It's like the, the pirate. The rum. Yeah, yeah, he's standing on a barrel. So Captain Henry Morgan was a real person. Yeah. He was a Welsh privateer based in the Caribbean. He was a hero in the 15th century for his daring attacks on Spanish lands and shipping. Okay. He's also well known for being a notorious drinker and partier. The dark truth is that one day he, got, he, he set himself up in Jamaica and eventually he drunk himself to death. Like um, <laughs> like in the parts of the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Except but why is the rum gone? Exactly. But, you know, he so drank he, himself to death. Did he? And they made a logo out of him. Wow. I mean, shout out to that guy. Yeah. Is it real? Oh, sounds vague enough to be true. True? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Part two? Part two. Okay. Part two, which yep. is completely, it's different, but similar. Yeah. You won't believe how much Nike paid for their logo. Oh, okay. So Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, was working as an assistant professor at Portland State University. Yeah. When he was there, he met Carolyn Davidson, a studying graphic designer. Uh-huh. When Knight started Nike in 1971, he asked her if she could design a stripe to go on the side of their shoe as a logo. Yeah. Davidson drew up the famous Nike swoosh in 17 hours and charged Knight $35. That's $2 an hour. What? 17 hours? As in like that's how long it took her that's or she worked it on her. it for 17 hours? She, it right, took her 17 yeah. hours. She charged him $2 an hour, so about $35. Yeah. And in 1983, about a decade later, she was honored by Nike with a surprise party and given a significant amount of stock in the company, which made her very, very wealthy. Oh my God, what a fucking gesture. How cool is that? That's beautiful. <laughs> 17, 17 hours to make, like, do you know how much work goes into logos now? They spend like, I think ANZ dropped 250 million on their logo or something. Oh my God. That's what? like, <laughs> I'm sorry, Alex, we did, our budget wasn't that big. Yeah, I know. But um, yeah, wow. Okay. Uh, oh, is this true? Nike now swoosh. that I think about it, it sounds kind of bullshit. That's like the most memorable logo when ever. you think of iconic logos, what do you got? Like Nike, Apple. Then I'm running out. Yeah. Adidas, I guess, but that's just because of the brand. It's not yeah. really the logo. Um, I'm going to go with bullshit. It's completely true. Fuck me. <laughs> It's completely true. Yeah, how good is that? So she, she, made the, like, she made the Nike logo relatively quickly, 35 bucks. Of course, 35 bucks what? Yeah. Maybe $150 I mean, that, now. Aside from like the child labor and stuff, that's, that's a nice move from Nike. So give the, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, it's also kind of, I mean, not the bare minimum, but you would expect <laughs> something like that considering sure. yeah, yeah. how little they paid her. Okay, nice. I like that one. <laughs> so yeah, two part of my logos. <laughs> Did you know that there's a guy who tattooed a huge steaming pile of poo on his girlfriend's back after he caught her cheating? How? So let me explain. <laughs> In November 2020, no, 2011, a tattoo artist, Ryan Fitzgerald, discovered his then girlfriend was cheating with his best friend. So he has oh to plan God. for revenge. She was already planning to get a large back tattoo of a scene from Narnia, the books. But instead, he spent hours drawing a huge turd Beautiful. with flies buzzing around it. Beautiful. Then she attempted to sue him for $100,000. But the waiver she had signed before the tattoo um, getting started stated that the design was like the artist's discretion. And was therefore unable to claim any compensation. Did he do that intentionally? Yeah. Genius. Yeah. Genius. Oh. And there's, I've got the photo, but yeah. Look, it's, I don't feel bad for her cheating on your her best his best friend. I like how, mean, low, yeah. how much lower can you go? Like, yeah. All right, I'll say it's true. It's actually completely bullshit. Oh, what? <laughs> a lot of people think this story oh, is true, actually. It sounds true. It's not that absurd of an idea. Yeah. But um, no, nah, apparently it's horseshit. There's no evidence that it ever existed. Well, you made it up. Or well, you found it? No, it's a bull, it's it's one of those like urban legend right. stories. I reckon it's been done, surely. No. no, there's no way. I reckon it would have been done. Well, you're wrong. Okay. Also, that was a submission, but I could not for the life of me find out who submitted it. So if that was you, I apologize and please get in touch, and I'll give you a shout out in the next show. Ah, oh, wrong one. Wow. Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just go through all oh, the sounds. Okay, I've not memorized these at all. Um. I got a great one here. Oh yeah. So did you know one woman made tennis the most popular sport in the world? 
And it's not Serena Williams? It is not Serena Williams. In okay. fact, she didn't even play tennis professionally. Oh, shit. Okay. So Gladys Roy was a stunt performer back in the early 1900s. She performed insane stunts, like changing a tire of a plane mid-flight whilst riding on top of another plane, just like changing it. Oh, what a legend. This, this is like 1920s, by the way. Yeah, wow. But her rise to fame came when she performed a stunt so crazy. It was one of the earliest times a photo went viral. I say that because it's, you know, 1920s yeah. <laughs> in history. Her and a fellow stunt woman climbed onto the wings of a biplane and waited until it was over 800 meters in the air. And they started playing a game of tennis on the wings. They had a little net set up and they locked, locked their feet onto the, the wings of the plane. And there's a famous photo of them with rackets playing tennis on the wings. Oh my God. Now, of course, they couldn't actually play because as soon as you hit the ball, it would... Poof, it would right. fly away. I got excited for no reason then. Yeah, yeah. So they weren't <laughs> actually hitting it back and forth. Yeah. But there's a very famous black and white photo of them like, you know, squatting with rackets, like yeah. playing it. And that went viral all over the news and everything. Um, and the photo actually skyrocketed tennis to become one of the most popular sports in the world in 1925. That's very, very cool. Very cool. But what is it true? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like tennis was already popular, although it probably was just popular for rich people. It seems like it's, it's like one of those rich people. It is because you need a court and it's only one. Like I've never played tennis. I played like once. Yeah, right. Um, well, I mean, now it's popularized kind of anyone. Right. If, in Australia, at least, if you want to, you can yeah. get into it. Um, let's go true. Why not? It is true. Hey. It is completely true. Nice. So, yeah, she was very, very famous back in those days. Um, she's a stunt performer. What, and a, what a legend. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, they, they can't say for sure if that was the reason, but they think it's a big reason tennis kind of spiked because they couldn't track everything like they could now. All you need is one viral video. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Did you know that Louis Vuitton burns their excess stock at the end of every year? No way. Yeah, let me explain. So Louis Vuitton is one of the world's oldest and like most successful luxury brands, right? They were founded in Paris almost two centuries ago. And the main reason for this practice is firstly, oh, there are three main reasons for this practice, right? Firstly, Louis Vuitton avoids sales at any cost. They almost never discount like, anything. Like discount sales, like yeah, yeah. You can never get Louis Vuitton on sale, right? Like Apple. Secondly, they destroy the unsold merchandise to prevent like theft and like people breaking into storehouses and stuff like that because there'd be like a black market for it, which is a bit of a shit yeah, yeah. Excuse, really. Thirdly, and most interestingly, um, they burn the bags in the US because there's a duty drawback law, which means if something is imported into the US and you have to pay duty, like a big tax on luxury tax on it, but then it's destroyed, you can reclaim that oh duty back. God. So they're able to recoup like a lot of the losses because they pay so much premium. Sh surely destroyed means like unintentionally. This is apparently the loophole. Um, and they're not the only ones. Apparently Burberry destroyed $37 million worth of goods in one year. And oh, isn't it? That's it's sickening. So, it's, that's capitalism in a nutshell. It's like, like that, those bags could go to anyone, but it, it does make sense. It's like they're a luxury brand because only the rich people have them. Exactly. If they just sent them to anyone. So I get, I get it, but couldn't it be repurposed or like stripped down and used in different brands or sure, something? Surely you could, you could use the leather in some other way. Like, yeah, it's pretty sickening. I don't know, but it's true. Facts. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's true. Fact. Yeah, 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 it's true. It's true. Oh, well, wait. Yay! <laughs> All right, these are the two yellow and green buttons. Factor cap. If we get it wrong, okay. that's what we're doing. All right, so nice. that was a yellow one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is a good one. Go this on. is a good one. I got no link. But did you know Disneyland has secret underground tunnels? All right, which one? So Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California, which yeah. is actually the original Disneyland. Yeah. It was one of the oldest and largest theme parks in the world being built in 1955. It was originally built using the infrastructure of an old military base. Mm -hmm. The mil military base was 70% complete um, or like finished before the US government pulled the plug on the project, having built gun ranges, training stations, offices, and an underground tunnel system should they need to evacuate. Yep. Disney snapped up the land and discounted price and they've used that to build the first ever Disneyland. The tunnels were kept a secret for mm. over 60 years until someone discovered the old military plans and leaked them online, revealing that most likely the tunnels are still existing underneath. Yeah. Not that it really means anything, but there are lots of theories. Disney put out a statement claiming that it's false, which has led to many people having theories about how the tunnels are used. Ooh, maybe they kidnapped the kitties and, and keep them down yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wouldn't it be terrifying if you got in there and they're just like, Mickey, like yeah, I know, like horror, yeah, 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 yeah. Like Mickey Mouse. It sounds like a like good that. like horror game, like yeah. underneath Disney. Oh, like adults Disney World. Yeah, yeah. You go down there and it's like just the upside down and it's Ooh. like all scary. That would be awesome. Unless it's bullshit. Nah, I reckon it's true. You reckon it's true? Yeah. It's actually complete bullshit. Oh, I made up the whole that's story. That's story. <laughs> that's rubbish. <laughs> that is rubbish. Got him. That's such a, Got him. That's such a boring story to make up. Nah. Here's a true story. Okay, go on. There are tunnels under Disneyland. <laughs> 
But do you know what they use them for? What are they using? It's for? so the characters could get to and from where they have to be without getting like disrupted by the crowd. Right. So the people in the like the suits would go under and run to the next point and jump up. Okay. I, I mean, made that up, makes a lot of I sense. I made up everything else through the base. I'm disappointed in you, Byron. I'm disappointed <laughs> that I got him. That's I've I've done four already. Have you? Oh no, no, no. Haven't. <laughs> get a load of this one. Did you know that penguins have disgusting sex lives? I'm not surprised for some reason. <laughs> Let me explain. So accounts of their depraved sexual activities were observed a century ago by Dr. Levick, who was a member of Captain Scott's um, famous polar team, and they're finally being made public. The details were so shocking at the time that Dr. Levick wrote them in Greek so that people wouldn't be able to decipher his notes. And they were even removed from the official papers when they released like the Natural History Museum's like report. Right. Because it was too shocking for like Edwardian England or whatever. All right, well, give it, give it to us then. So they include sexual coercion, sexual and physical abuse of chicks, so like their kids, and worst of all, necrophilia. What? Yeah, but there's a reason apparently for the necrophilia. And this is the males seeing the positioning of the, bir- of the females, that it's, that's what causes the sexual reaction. And they're not distinguishing between live females and the who are like waiting for right. for copulation and dead penguins from the previous year who died who just happened to be in that position. So this guy was like watching them just like go up to these dead penguins and like mate with them, and he's like, "Oh my god!" Um, right, because the penguins are trying to mate, but they 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 just they they they're hardwired to just like yes. basically bang anything in that position, right? And I guess they don't the even female, check whether it's alive, and maybe the females are hardwired to. <laughs> get themselves in that position when they're right yeah right so that is an interesting one (laughs) i'm gonna go true otherwise you're gonna mess up brain it's true (laughs) okay thank god but also not again another submission this is when i was on holiday and i was taking submissions but i like i didn't write down the name so again if that was you please get in touch and i'll shout you out next show let's go on i got an uh speaking of animals oh yeah that have interesting stories. Okay, go on. Did you know hippos poop while they fight? Oh, hell yeah. Let me explain. <laughs> so male hippos will defecate while fighting each other in order to claim their territory. Nice. Hippos literally spray their turds as far as they can in order to assert dominance oh over each God. other. Yes. <laughs> So you imagine a hippo, they'll like flick shit over to the other side where the other hippo is to say that that's their space and their dominance. That's mad. So the tail is used to fling feces as far as 10 meters from the excretion site. The tail? The tail, because they flick it with their tail, spraying turds as far as he can on either side in an attempt to claim this land as his own. Nah, <laughs> nah. Hippos don't have tails? Yeah, like little ones. Like they've got these little tails. Nah. They do, that's true. They do have genuine little tails. Nah, bullshit. You think the whole story's bullshit or yeah. just tails? I reckon the whole thing's bullshit. It's actually completely true. Oh, come off it. Come off it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> two. Oh, my God. Two for two. Oh, my. Well, two out of four. But yeah. yeah. Who's um, counting, right? They are true. They have. They do have mini tails. And as they poo, they, like, flick it. I, d- I just don't see that happening. Well, there's, there's, big, there's a video man. on Instagram. They're... There's a video on Instagram. Okay, I'll send it to you. All right, please do. Um, and the <laughs> listeners will have seen that video. Oh, no, sorry. The watchers would have. The listeners would not have. Yeah. So if you're listening, go go watch that part on TikTok if you want to see it. Mm. The hippos. Very interesting. Very interesting. That is a good one. Mm. Now, um, we're actually going to have to have a break. So if you want to press the, the break music and then we'll come back in just a second. And we're back. Oh yeah, you want to fade that? You want to fade that out? I'm fading it out. We're back for news for noobs, oh. a segment where we teach you all you need to know, what's going on in the world, so you sound smart in everyday. This is the only time that I read the news every week. It is the only time. And again, my God, you open up the news if you don't filter it down and just filter it by like world, it's just war. Yeah, prime ministers. It's just boring. It's so depressing. So. Yes. I found it very difficult this week to find some genuinely interesting and stuff. And I feel like it's not as good as usual, but maybe by saying that I've now tainted the listeners. Yeah. So maybe just no, ignore no, no, that. No, believe in, trust in me. It's incredible. Listener. Trust in me. I'm going to bring it home. News I'm going to bring it home. I've got a cool one to start with actually. I've got a cool one to start with as well. Well, I'm going to- Mine I'm, is cooler. Okay. Well, we'll see. Did you know that they're trying to bring back the Tasmanian tiger from extinction? How is that possible? So- how cool is this? They're going, to, they're going to full Jurassic Park, right? right? Genetics and stuff. Yeah. Researchers in Australia and the US are embarking, embarking, embarking on a multi-million dollar project to bring back the Tasmanian tiger from extinction. Mm. The last known one died in the 1930s, right? The team um, behind it say they can recreate it using stem cells and gene editing technology. And the first one could be reintroduced into the wild within 10 years time. Oh my God, that is Jurassic World stuff. What could possibly go wrong? That is literally Jurassic World stuff. How crazy is like this is this is next levels like that's 
I, yeah. I I'm speechless. I'm that, speechless. It's a great, that if, is a great one to drop in conversation. If they like, pull that off, that's unbelievable. You're in a conversation. Guys, did you hear they're Jurassic pre- World is happening in real life? What do you mean? They're going to create a tiger. Like a, a tiger that's extinct. That's extinct. Yeah. Do they have like exist? Because it, it, I'm stumbled. Yeah. I'm stumbled. I'm, <laughs> I'm stumbled. That's really cool though. Yeah. That is really cool. Here's a cool one. Okay. It better be. Did you know that you can now name a planet? Mm. So since NASA, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency launched the James Webb Telescope, which has been going viral this year, yeah. we've been treated to some extraordinary images of space, uh, nebulas and whatnot. Yeah. The large and powerful space telescope has also been busy observing new exoplanetary systems. Now an exoplanet is a planet outside of our existing solar system. Yeah. And wait, they would like some help with the public to name 20 of them. <gasps> So Planet McPlanet face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Planet <laughs> McPlanet face. That's an Australian joke right there. Um, but yeah, if you want to, you can like create a team and you can like, if you do some Googling, have a look at the options, you can create a team and like submit ideas and maybe you'll get to name a planet. Uh, I Because I thought this was going to, you were going to go down the line of like, you could buy a, yes, one of these planets. That's when I saw the headline, I thought that as well. But wouldn't it be amazing if like there was a sci-fi film or like maybe even just whatever happens in the future. And like your ancestor just happened right. to buy one of these like fucking planets. Like on- a boomer who bought a $100,000 like luxury mansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they just bought this planet and then like someone inherits it one day and they're like, yeah, yeah. holy shit, like this is my whole, this, I have this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They find like records or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you can pay, you can not buy a star. You can buy to name a star. Yeah. I think, yeah, but the, cause there's so many stars. Exactly. But there's not that many planets. So yeah, planets would be worth. On a, you can't live on a star. Yeah, and planets will be worth, I wonder how much that'd be yeah. if you can name a planet. I mean, at some point you'll be able to buy a planet, I reckon, for sure. I you can buy land. What's the difference? It's just more land. True. Yeah, true. Go. See, big brain. True, 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 yeah. Big brain. Um, oh, yeah, what you got? Ooh, so this is uh, maybe a little more sinister. Okay. This, this video might actually get taken down from uh, TikTok. Did you know that Alibaba and TikTok owners ByteDance have shared the details of their algorithms with China's regulators for the first time? No, I didn't. So the Cyberspace Administration of China, or the CAC, <laughs> has published a list with the descriptions of 30 algorithms that were shared with it. Uh, in a statement, it said that the algorithm list would be routinely updated in a bid to curb data abuse. I don't know anything of what you're saying right now. Well, base, okay. So um, the ByteDance, like the TikTok algorithm basically is gauges your interests and yeah, stuff yeah, through yeah. like likes and comments and, and whatever. Um, and Beijing is is urging service providers to ensure their algorithms spread positive energy and are not used to encourage indulgences, excessive spending, or exposure to celebrity culture. Well, this is that theory I was telling you about. Yeah. The theory of just like in China, if you go on TikTok, it's like engineers, it's educators and creators putting out decent content. Yep. In Australia, America, and Western countries, it's literally so much thirst traps and- It's idiots like us. It's not, well, even, <laughs> yeah, it is in a way, but even like- you know, the, every educational creator I know is suffering right now. All their yep. views are down. And it's like, why is TikTok suppressing education? And the theory is that if China wants to overtake the world, they can, you know. Which every country does, by the but way. China, like, yeah, yeah, probably but China famously, probably could. And has the biggest chance of doing it. Yeah. Um, if they want to, then just put out stupid mind-numbing content to the next generation, which mm. in a way they have done very successfully yeah. and suppress anything that puts out educational content. Yeah. That's the theory, which I fully back. I think it's true. Like- Byron and Pace is a, we just talk I, shit and we get more views on Byron and Pace than we do on our other accounts. I'm more inclined to believe that you just follow the money rather than the conspiracy theory. Like they make more money because because people are genuinely more interested in just mind-numbing entertainment. Yeah, that's because, but if they, from the get-go, if TikTok was all about. But, they, but they'd make less money. Yeah, okay. When you have shareholders, you yeah. just chase. A bit of both, maybe. <laughs> all right, maybe. But China maybe. isn't, China, the whole thing in China is they're putting out enter, uh, educational content. Yeah, because their government, I mean, I, like, I don't know anything about politics, yeah, right? Yeah. But like, it sounds to me like their government's like, maybe we should do this instead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if if we had uh, governments that were slightly less commercially um, inclined, then maybe we'd have a different outcome. Good Who one, knows? Man. Good one though. Who knows? I'm still not sure. Sh- I'm way out sure. of my depth on this conversation. Yeah, I'm full, st- still not fully understanding what your story was there. Um, yeah, well. I don't know about the algorithm and stuff, like. I don't know what that means. Well, like they've released the, algorithm. The, the, like the whole details. thing is like Facebook and like Meta and, and Google and, and Instagram, all those, like what, whatever. Um, they apparently have like resisted all attempts from like US government um, with sharing their data and algorithms and stuff like that. It's all private. Whereas like the Chinese companies are sharing it with the government. Right. So, okay. Okay. Right. Gotcha. 
There you go. Could have just said that from the get-go. Yeah, well, you know. Coles <laughs> is to remove single-use plastic bags in Australia for a new trial, which is pretty exciting from the environmental perspective. Yeah. The Coles is set to use single-use plastic fresh produce bags in ACT to encourage shoppers to bring you re- reusable bags rather than using plastic bags every time See, they shop. This isn't even good news because this happened in other countries so long ago. But for Australia, we're lagging. I know Woolworths has done it for a while, but, yeah. you know, um, we'll take what we can get. In fact, this is this would even count as bad news because yeah, it's taken yeah, so yeah, yeah. long. It's like um, we were talking last time, like gay rights was – gay marriage yeah. was legalized in 2017. It's like, yeah. is that good Come news on. or bad yeah, yeah, news? Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> I guess any progress is progress, but yeah. yeah. You know how, okay, you know how we watched that WeWork documentary? I am, yes. So uh, did you know the controversial founder of WeWork, Adam Neumann, yes. is launching a new company called Flow? Oh boy. Get this right. The long-haired entrepreneur whose staggering rise and fall has inspired reams of articles, books, television series, and uh, including starring Anne Hathaway and Jared Leto. I yeah, haven't yeah. seen that one. That's the, like they re- reenact the whole thing. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, he's making a new, he's started a new company that just got like $400 million worth of investment or almost and um, $350 million worth of investment. It's called Flow and basically it's kind of like WeWork but for apartments. So they're buying like 4,000 apartments in the US and um, they're trying to create like a widely recognized apartment brand that has like the same amenities and like it's basically just like re-revolutionizing the uh residential real estate industry but what so you, you buy the apartments off them what is it so it's like you buy a uh, you buy a flow apartment so it, they have all like this it's like pre, oh, it's i don't right, know it's, right. it's like if you do anything at scale you have it all pre-packaged and yeah, they yeah, have like the nice. same amenities maybe like i don't know it's cheaper or whatever um but they're basically trying to disrupt the residential real estate industry in the same way that they did the like commercial or office right. real estate industry that's interesting it is and it's interesting that like even after everyone knows that that guy's a total knob, um, you can still get hundreds of million dollars worth of investment yeah. because business they don't really care. Yeah. Like as long as the idea is good, yeah. But I mean, like we'll see how it goes. But it's already valued at over a billion dollars. So uh, that's that's just bullshit though. Like yeah, yeah the valuation thing. Yeah, yeah, the valuation thing's bullshit. We we spoke about the uh, Indian boys last time. Yeah, who have a billion dollar business and it's like yeah, but it's probably going to fall through just like they've never made any money. Yeah. There's no like, profit and all that stuff. It's like, like my, bi- my business is more profitable <laughs> and I'm like 200 grand or something in a year. Oh, you don't want to share that information. Well, online. whatever the number is, it's not, it's probably a lot more or maybe a lot, a lot less. less. Could yeah. Be. Probably yeah. a lot more though. Yeah, it could be. We'll see. So Australian game cult of the lamb exceeds expectations. So this is a very small game, but it's blown up and cult of the lamb is a game where you control a lamb to create and micromanage your own cults in a quest <laughs> for otherworldly power and has exceeded the Australian developers expectations reaching number one on the U S switch stores since oh, release, wow. which is really, really cool. That's amazing. Like so a- yeah, <laughs> the concept is you're just like a lamb and you walk around and you've got to like build up your own cult. Yeah. And, uh, that's brilliant. Yeah. So that's um, of the lamb. good news there. Um, but yeah, it's just blown up. It's been crazy. Um, the founder said, astonished in the sale numbers. And he said, I wouldn't be surprised in the first month if we hit a million units, which is just insane. Yeah, which wow. is, you love hearing little stories like that. One of, for uh, the little guys. Yeah, one yeah. for the little guys. Exactly. That's so, so dope. That's a cool little one and a great little uh, piece of news to throw in there. I'd love to see some gameplay footage of that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, shall we? Um, oh, wait, I got. Oh, you more. got more. Yeah, I got heaps more. Are there any good ones? Um, <laughs> I got a. I got a rough one. A we'll rough see. one. All right. All right. I can handle one rough one today. So celebrity walrus Freya <laughs> has been murdered by the Norwegian government. Oh, what? <laughs> because there's a walrus that's been causing a bit of havoc yeah. in this area. Because it's like, what, 600, how much is it? 600 kilos or something. Yeah, 600 kilogram female and it is Freya. And the president said he backed the decision to kill the walrus because it kept safety for people. And he started gathering a crowd. And basically there's all these arguments of people saying we shouldn't kill the walrus, no animals can be safe now and all this stuff. The counter arguments are people were disobeying the laws, which probably would have led to potentially an accidental. To try and get like photos with it or something. Yeah, get photos and just get in there and like or swim in when they're not supposed to be swimming and whatnot. And so it's it's just this whole sticky thing. Could they not put it in a, in a aquarium or something? At, I don't at know. At the very least. But they, had to, they euthanized the walrus. Us. And Come so on. there's a whole bunch of debates going on, tweets are going out, um, you know, and a lot of people have different opinions on where it is. I think, I mean, I haven't done so much research in the story, we just do the surface, but yeah. it's kind of like, I think it's easy to condemn them now, but if someone sure. died or two two kids are killed by the walrus in the next 
in the week, in next week, right? Yeah. Then it's very easy to be like, well, why didn't they look after the walrus? Why, why weren't they doing it? So, but I agree with you. Do they have to euthanize it? I yeah. don't know. This Surely is this is why there's so much spark going on Surely for the story. Surely there's another solution. They should have called us. They should have called us. The most reasonable heads in uh, show business. Yeah. Um, uh, one last one, okay. which I thought All was right. really cool, is, um, and it's not even loading. Give me a second. Do you want me to fill for you? Yeah, fill for me. Um, so one of the things that I like about Byron is that he's usually always so organized and we show up to these recordings and he's just got everything like ready to go. So uh, Sadie Sink, who plays Max in Stranger Things, yeah. recently won supporting Best Actress for her amazing performance in Stranger Things. So I, <laughs> for some reason, I think this is a bullshit story. <laughs> okay, no, wait, let me say it again. <laughs> okay. Sadie Sink won Best Supporting Actress for her amazing performance in Stranger Things okay. for the latest season. And she was incredible. I haven't seen um, her. <laughs> you haven't seen her, but like she's absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, I thought that was really cool. Thought I'd share that. Just a little bit of, again, Something, something to sprinkle in, just like, oh, did you hear Stranger Things? You know, Max, she won Best Supporting Actress. Oh, she, she was so good, blah, blah, blah. Dope. Again, dope. That's it, I'm done for now. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't back you up on that story. I just know nothing about it. That's fine, that's fine. Now we'll move on to... Uh... Come on, Byron. Ooh. Now that is scary. Would you rather with Byron and Pay? <laughs> <laughs> I have I found this is the quickest I've ever found would you rather questions. One minute. All right. And they're great. Okay. They're really good cool ones. So well, I'm very excited. Let me start then. Sure. Because we'll we'll come back to you. But um all right, here's one. Would you rather flip a coin right now, heads you die, tails you live, or prison for ten years? Oh my god, that is a tough one. Yeah. Risk it for the biscuit or just, you know, cop it? Oh, my God. I guess prison, I'm out at 34. Yeah. Which is not the end of the world. I've still got a huge life ahead of me. Mm -hmm. I think I have to go prison. I, take the prison? I think it's very easy to always think of the best case. In my head, I, I'd flip it, but I'm always imagining that it lands on. But so what if you died? Yeah, I just you just die, yeah, yeah, I guess. But, like, I think I'd go prison. Yeah? Yeah, I think it would be a cool story. I could turn into something, you know. Obviously, it's not ideal. <laughs> well, what about you? What do you take? I'll take the flip. You take the flip? Yeah, I like those All odds. right, let's do it. Do we have a coin? <laughs> I don't have a coin. Do we have a coin? Do we have anything? We can? Okay. How about uh, we got a deck of cards here. Yeah. I'll go one red, one black. That's the same odds, right? I don't know. It is the same odds. Yeah, okay. So I got a red here and I got a black here. Oh, they're both tens. Oh, I'm going to be. shuffle them upside down and you're just going to pick one. That's the, surely the same odds. If this is not the same odds and someone's watching, okay, they'll tell us. Yeah, all right. What are you choosing, red or black? Um, I'm choosing black. You're choosing black? Yeah. All right, here we go. Which one do you choose? Uh, on your left. On my left, so this yeah. card? All right, you're choosing black? Yeah. Congratulations. Let's you, fucking go. You just avoided 10 years. Now all I, day, baby. Now you survived and I'm in prison. <laughs> and, I, and I look like a, a mug. If, okay, let's say I also do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll go red. Okay. I haven't even seen what they are, so there's no way yeah, I, can yeah. fuck, I can fuck around with this. Okay. All right. What do we got? I'll go that one. This one? Yeah. Byron Dempsey, you are dead. Oh, see, this is why I took prison. <laughs> this is why I took prison. I'm a genius. Seems like we both made the right decision. All right. That was a good one. That was a good one. Good nice. thing I'm, a, I'm so creative on the spot. That is true. Yeah. Uh, would you rather have a child every single year for 20 years <laughs> yeah. or never ever have children at all? Child every year for 20 years. What a life. What an incredible life that would be. No. Imagine the family get togethers. No, imagine every year you have to go. That means you can be a adulting, for, a bit parenting the rest of your life. Yeah, that's cool. I still do the Byron Pay show. No, 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 come on, man. Still make music? Hell yeah. All right. All right I'm, not, I'm not shitting them out. Like, I just, they're just arriving at my doorstep or whatever. I mean, yeah, it's definitely an easier answer <laughs> as a man. <laughs> True. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a privilege in that. But um, yeah, I'll take the kids. That's awesome. All right. What would you be? No way. I don't want 20 sterile, kids. And lonely. You're not going to be travel or do much. Yeah, you can. I mean, if you outsource imagine your kids. the income that they'll be generating. No, imagine the income they're going to cost you. No, no. Every once, year. Nah, but once they you say get the average like, kid costs like 800 grand in this in Sydney. Yeah, but once you get like to that 30 year mark, you're really recouping on those investments. What? It's a long term play. No. It's a long term 30 play. years, dude. 30 years. One of them's still only 10 years old. Yeah, but the other ones are, are pumping out the income. Family 30. business. Most 30 year olds don't even make money. business. Look, Byron, I've, I've stated my answer. All right, fine. You can't disagree with me. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> Speaking of uh, the cult of the goat or whatever it is. Lamb. Cult, cult of the lamb. 
<laughs> Would you rather have lag every time you play video games forever or listen to music with only one headphone in? Lag for video games. Yeah. It's just because I don't play video games so much anymore. Yeah. And it hasn't like, if I was in my peak back when I was younger, yeah, that would be drive me mental. Yeah. Um, what if it was laggy internet forever? Or? Oh, that's different. Yeah, I'd, yeah. Go, like, I'd take the I'd take the headphones then. Yeah, yeah, that's but brutal. In this case, got a lag. Yeah, but you, <sighs> I think the lag would just make you not play them anymore, which yeah, exactly. is probably a good thing. So yeah, oh, I, it depends. I'd cop because I need the headphones. Music, exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, this is a great one. Okay, this is an absolute right. banger. Would you rather be extremely gassy <laughs> on your first date yeah. or your wedding night? <laughs> <laughs> first date. But they're not, there might not be a wedding night. I fight it on my first date. Yeah, but- Because I do it as a test. No, just a fart is extremely gassy. Oh yeah, true. Because <laughs> yeah. if, if you fight on the first date and they, they laugh or they're chill with it, yeah. then, then it's a but good But one sign. cheeky little fart, little two, is not extremely <laughs> gassy. I'm talking like they're smelling it. Oh, on your the wedding thing, day, the whole day though. The issue is, I just don't think you'll ever get to a wedding day if you're dropping bombs. What if you're like, look, you got to understand. Yeah, this is, yeah. This I'm is... cursed. <laughs> <laughs> I've been cursed by a magic genie and I dropped gas on the first day. But if we get married, I'm all yours, baby. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe the wedding day is better because you they're already locked in. Like, And you can be like, look. I, re I reckon I cop the first day and figure out a way around <laughs> it. Like go do an outdoors like. Yeah, true. On like a windy day. On like a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Go out on a boat. And just, oh yeah. I reckon yeah that's if you can get it. through that day, then you can do anything. Exactly. And just maybe take them out next to a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> they won't know the wiser. Yeah, a tour of the sewers or something. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a romantic like a uh, gondola through the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I yeah. like that one a lot. Oh, that was fun. You done? Yeah, I'm done. All right. Da, 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 da. Hey. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for staying with us for the longer episode. But uh, yeah, that's it. That is it. Shout out to Acast for having us on. This is going to be good. I think it's going to be good for us. We're gonna we're gonna take over the world, and uh, you guys are along for the ride. So thank you for listening. Please leave the the subscribes, reviews. the reviews, the stars, feedback. If you gonna message us, send us stories. Byron is lacking. I'm I'm struggling for stories, man. Yeah, I spend a lot of time looking for these stories because we get a lot of either crap ones, yeah, or just not much lately. So, yeah. well, yeah. all right, much love, guys. Big kiss. See you next week. <laughs>